Omar, we are seeing a global climate crisis that appears to be worsening food shortages caused partly by the conflict in Ukraine. Now, just how bad is the climate crisis, Omar? Yeah, the situation is really bad. And if we were to speak about the African continent, to be specific, the biggest cause of the climate crisis right now is fossil fuels that are being burned for electricity, heat, and transportation. And what this means is now we are seeing more frequent and intense droughts, a lot of heat waves, rising sea levels, and warming oceans, which are really affecting people, animals, uh, and all other living beings. An example that I could mention is just earlier this month, floods caused the deaths of about 30 people in Uganda, including children, and also left more than 400,000 people without access uh, to clean water. And what this means is the situation is the same for the whole continent. If you look at Kenya, where we are all based, whenever we are having floods, uh, you're seeing students not being able to go to schools because schools in areas like Baringo are being submerged in water. We're seeing people dying whenever there is uh, a lot of uh, famine and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really, really bad situation. And the problem is that now African countries, whenever we discover these fossil fuels within our continent, we then now have an appetite and all of us want to pursue it. We're seeing a lot of interest from many African countries, including the African Union, where they came up with an African common position on energy access and transition. And in that common position, they're actually favoring gas, uh, fossil fuels and nuclear. And what this means is that Africa will continue wallowing in these problems. And therefore, for the next generations to come, things will only get worse. Well, uh, speaking Af of Africa, and I'll give you a chance to expand on what you are saying, Africa continues to be affected most by climate change. How can African countries take a, a leading role in fighting the climate crisis? And what do you see as a way out of the problem for the continent? Yeah, and, and while Africa is affected the most by climate change, it's actually the, the continent that has contributed the least uh, to the historical emissions. We only have contributed about less than 4% of the historical emissions. And what this means is that as a country, as a continent, sorry, one, we have to look at different ways to develop because we've seen that the development models that have been uh, utilized by the global north and the wealthier nations have brought us to this uh, problem that we're in today and therefore we have to look at an alternative way of developing the good news is that not going through the fossil fuel option is not really a liability but an opportunity because one africa has more than ample opportunities to still develop and provide energy for the more than 600 million people that lack access to it in a way that doesn't harm climate, nature, and environment. And some of these ways, if I could give an example, is for instance, if you look at solar, Africa has the most potential to produce over 40% of the current global capacity of solar. But if you look at what we are generating currently, less than 1% of the global solar capacity is coming from Africa. And what this means is that increasingly, Africa has to ask for partners and investment, uh, people who come in to invest within the continent to come with better ideas that are looking at alternatives which have more than potential opportunities and also stop looking at exploiting these resources for the benefits of the global north and wealthier nations because we are seeing a lot of the fossil fuel extractions that are happening within the continent are mostly for export while the people are left behind with all the impacts uh, that keep affecting them and their, and their loved ones. Well, Omar, important points that you made there, especially the fact that Africa contributes only 2 to 3 percent of global emissions. Tell me, what kind of support can wealthier nations then give to the continent to counter the effect of climate change? And do you think these countries are doing enough thus far? I mean, if, if the, the, the thing is because we've contributed the least and we are also affected the most, the least that these uh, wealthier nations could do one, they definitely need to come up with ways to make us whole because what they've done is uh, inequality, they're affecting people, and people, it's costing actually lives and livelihoods uh, of many, many people within the whole continent. And ways that they could do this, one, is make sure that first they stop investing in all these harmful projects that keep affecting people all over the globe, but mostly also in Africa. And in doing so, then uh, finance the alternative way 
of getting this development that is needed in energy. And to do so, it will mean providing enough resources to, to invest in, in renewable, community-led renewable energy, including solar, wind, and other many, many options that we have within the continent. Secondly, because their greed and, and pursuit of fossil fuels has caused a lot of loss and damage for the whole continent, the, the law, or at least common sense, requires that whoever causes the loss or the damage has to pay it. And therefore, what this means is they have to really pay for these laws and damages they've caused all over the world, but in this case, within the continent. And it's not really about aid. It's not really about helping. It's a liability that they have done and caused to us. And therefore, they, at least for the very least, have to pay for this. Secondly, we have to call for climate reparations. And, and I don't like using the terminology about climate finance, because with finance, it normally connotes that someone is giving you a loan or helping you. But what we have today is people pursued fossil fuels and developed us nations and left African continent behind and left us and our peoples without any ways to mitigate and adapt to all these consequences that are happening. And therefore, they need to give the funding that's required to make sure that we, we are able to deal with all these uh, uh, impacts that are being caused. And finally, they need to finance the transition that's required so that we can develop in a way that is less harmful to the world to the environment and to people. And